Without a doubt, this is the most difficult, challenging and emotional true crime documentary I've ever watched. I have watched maybe hundreds of true, true crime shows and episodes over the years. Dream Killer is very painful and I thoroughly recommend it. This was actually released in 2015 originally. I only just discovered it on Netflix and it's directed by Andrew Jenks. And this <laughs> this is really painful, but also really lovely. Now I can't really spoil this for you because it's, you know, it's obvious about what it's about because this is a true case, of course. But I'll just read out the description on IMDb just to give you a, a brief overview in case you are not familiar and I, I, I hadn't heard of this. I hadn't heard of this case at all until now. So on IMDb it says, In 2005, 20-year-old Ryan Ferguson was convicted and sentenced to 40 years in prison for a crime he did not commit, causing his father Bill to embark on a 10-year campaign to prove Ryan's innocence. Now, First of all, I'm pretty sure the documentary said 2004, and I'm pretty sure it was a 30-year sentence, 20 for the murder and 10 for a burglary. But I could be wrong, and that's completely, you know, it's, it's semantics. But he and a friend are accused of committing this, this murder, and I do have to say that there is the occasional graphic image of the murder scene. There, It's just a few of them, there's not too many, so if you've got a weak stomach, you know, don't worry. But he is, or his father, his father Bill, who is fantastic. Like, he's got such a likeable, lovely personality. And it's great for him to take us through this story in the documentary. Bill is adamant that his son is innocent. And he spends ten years trying to prove Ryan's innocence. And I think that's amazing. And the things he does for his son are incredible. We have audio clips of the time in prison and we also hear from Ryan himself. Now I'm a little bit confused about when they filmed bits of this because there are parts where Ryan is speaking from maybe seven years into his sentence and then of course we get to hear from him after the ten years so I'm not sure if they were filmed kind of as part of this, not not for this documentary, but if it was footage they originally had and then decided to create the documentary, or if it's just footage somebody else had and they bought the rights to it, I'm really not sure. I'd be interested to find that out. Ryan, the main thing as well, Ryan is very likeable. That's essential, because we have to get behind him and... I definitely 100% felt his innocence. Now that's obviously the way the documentary is presenting it and making me feel. But at no point did I feel like I didn't think he deserved to be released. I was completely on the side of Bill and of the documentary, which was very necessary. It's quite a very frustrating documentary. Not because of the documentary. I think the documentary style, the way they segue from one thing to another, the clips they use, the editing, the interviews. I think everything flows fantastically. But because of the subject matter, it is infuriating. There's a particular... Um, well, he was a judge at the end, but there's a particular prosecutor called Kevin Crane who is a nightmare in this. And I just by the end of it, I wanted to punch him. And... I won't say too much more about that because I don't want to spoil the specifics just in case you haven't seen this yet. But he really bugged me. Um, we have some witnesses, of course. They're quite random witnesses, but they do add, you know, enough to this. What really frustrates me about this is that they convicted him without any evidence, except there is his friend called Chuck Aronson. Erickson, who started to admit to this crime. And to this day, I don't know if I believe that he did that crime or not. I don't for a second believe that he did. And he was, like, coerced into admitting it. And, of course, if your friend admits to it and then says that you helped, you're going to go down. But that's the only evidence. They imprisoned Ryan just because somebody else wanted to 
dragging down with him. And that may be a really harsh way to say um, what what Ericsson was doing, because I don't think he was necessarily of sound mind. I think he had been coerced quite a lot. But the fact that they imprisoned Ryan on no evidence, zero evidence at all, of course there wasn't any evidence because he didn't do it. The witness, no, I can't, I can't tell you what the wit one of the witnesses said because it will spoil some things. I want you to feel the anger with me <laughs> when you watch it. I want you to have all these little snippets of information fed to you at the right moments. That will make you go a little bit insane. So it's very hard. The hardest part for me is actually near the beginning when we get the um, court scene. When we see the footage from the court case where Ryan is first convicted. It's, hor it's horrible. I'm welling up at the thought. Just his parents. His parents' reaction when the verdict is announced, broke me. And I can't imagine what Ryan was going through. And obviously we have the benefit of hindsight. I can't say, well, the jury were stupid. How dare they think this? But at the same time, the jury were stupid. How dare they think that? They said he was guilty on what evidence? On no evidence. I have no idea how they managed to get away with that. But obviously... You know, we have the benefit of hindsight, as I said. It's a beautiful documentary. Fantastic. Very well made. Very well put together. You'll feel every emotion going. That's 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 a definite. My eyes are actually filling up. It will take you on a, a proper emotional journey. You will love some people. You will hate the others. But above all, I am just absolutely thrilled for Ryan. And he said something... He said something at the end that really stuck with me about how he feels now that he's out of prison. And again, I won't spoil it exactly, but what he said was really poignant. And, you know, even though he's now free, is he? Is he really? Um, as far as I'm aware, this documentary didn't actually mention the fact that he got a £10 million settlement for being falsely imprisoned. And the other thing as well, the documentary didn't actually really explain how he was why he was released like we know kind of how but it was all just very suddenly explained in the documentary um but i feel like that's by the by because a lot of things were happening at that point and we learned that he was innocent and he was released after they appealed um i don't know why they decided to accept the appeal or what specifically was it because of the lack of evidence or because of the coercion I'm not sure what the strongest argument for it was. But either way, incredible, fantastic documentary. As I said, I saw it on Netflix, so at the time of recording this, it's definitely on there just now. It has a 7.4 out of 10 rating on IMDb, which is impeccable. It's a brilliant rating. Absolutely fantastic. Please go and watch it. You will well up. Ryan is on Twitter. I will try to remember to link his Twitter in the description. It's 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 a wonderful essential documentary and unfortunately there are many more people out there in Ryan's position. What can we do about it? 